Hey, hey everyone. We live? We want to welcome you. Okay. We want to welcome you tonight for this uh, grief series on making traditions memorable. We, uh, we know that this time of year can be really hard as we've experienced it firsthand, obviously. And um, I just wanted to start out with wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. And I hope you have an added measure of God's love surrounding you and um, love from your lost one, too. Um, I want to start with a story. My sister-in-law, my sweet sister-in-law, Debbie Nearing, uh, our first Christmas, I could, it was like four months after Lily passed away, and it was really, really hard, obviously. It was her favorite holiday. She loved all holidays, but Christmas was her favorite. And I was just in such the midst of acute grief, I could barely even decorate for Christmas. So she... Plus, can I just interrupt yeah. real quick? Plus, on December 8th, um, just before, a few weeks before Christmas, our dog, Blue, oh, who yeah. was a puppy, mm -hmm. pretty much became paralyzed. And so that was, and we, we talked about that a little bit further, but that was like heartbreaking. And mm -hmm. Lily was one of the huge instigators in wanting to get the puppy. And so then that was like a death upon a death almost for us right before the Christmas holiday. So I think yeah. that that was also weighing really heavy on you. And too. it took a lot to take care of her, so... Yes, Blue was paralyzed yes. in her house. Yep. Yeah, that was horrible. So that was another thing that was added on that. And it was, as I look back, that having a paralyzed dog really did distract from the pain, but it was still there. But so... And so Debbie... Debbie, she, um, she said... Would you? I was thinking we could go and light luminaires and um, go sing Christmas songs at Lily's gravesite. And I said, oh, yeah, that would be amazing. And I kind of felt bad at first that I didn't think of that. Here I am, her mom. But I did um, recognize that I was grieving so bad that it was hard to do really anything. So Christmas Eve, we all met. We made our own little luminaires which I'll show you. This is just an example, but we just took paper bags. You just cut a shape in it, and then we just put these little um, battery-operated light candles or light, some little mini lights, and we just put them in the bottom of this with some rocks so they wouldn't blow away. And we just kind of put it all around um, her grave site, and we sang songs, some of her favorite ones, and Silent Night ended with Silent Night, and I just remember feeling so much love and so much happiness and peace when we did that, that I knew I wanted to make a tradition, so we've done it um, last year, and then this will be our third year doing it. But I always look forward to it, and I always it always warms my heart as I think about it, because Debbie thought about it for me, and she scheduled it, and made it happen so I'll forever be grateful for her for doing that for us and I was and I just think that when that kind of a, the theme of hopefully the message tonight is that when we do these things traditions and do these things in memory of them that can't be with us um, personally anymore that we feel their presence and that's the magic of it and we certainly have felt Lily with with that, mm -hmm. um, with that sure. event. And uh, so I just wanted to share um, some things that we've done that have um, helped. So before Lily passed away, I'd started a tradition that I would, I had some Christmas books, but I'd just buy a new one every year until I got 25 Christmas books. I'm still working on it. But uh, I'd wrap all of them every year and the kids could open one every night. And as I was thinking about um, these traditions, I remember Lily, I have a picture of her, and she's reading one of the Christmas books, and all of her siblings are surrounding her, and it's one of my favorite memories. And so we continue to do that, 
and it's one of my favorite things to do is to read my to my kids wonderful Christmas children's books and to have them surrounding me and we're just all quiet and listening and enjoying a good story so that's another thing that's um, been awesome so I just really simple wrap a book and um, they even help me wrap them because um, they know what they are but um, every year when I get the new one that's always a surprise so um, Another thing is writing down acts of kindness that have been done to us or that um, we see um, the kids do or that Josh does and, or that we do. And we write them down and we put them in Lily's stocking. And every time I do this, it another um, kind of it warms my heart again because um, kindness always does that. It always helps you see the good and it helps you see the love that you have for others or that they have for you. Uh, one example this week, uh, Josh had his birthday and um, That's then, why I look so yeah. much older tonight. <laughs> Gray hair and everything. Yeah, and the day after uh, I got a text that said check on your porch. It was early in the morning and I checked and there was a gallon of whole milk and some uh, hot cocoa bombs they're just big round chocolates with all the cocoa powder and stuff inside and you put them in hot milk and so I just thought wow and so there was a little card with directions and I put that in her stocking just so we could remember that act of kindness and and so what all of these act of kindness on Christmas Day we will get them all out and read them and just contemplate um, the good that that is in the world that's been done to us and the love that we felt. Well, it's not necessarily Christmas, but we also did the same thing. I like that idea this to in days leading up to Lily's birthday mm -hmm. this year. Um, we did acts of kindness each day to, I mean, in preparation for her birthday. And, you know, birthdays are holidays mm -hmm. for those that have lost, those that have passed away. And there may be a tendency to kind of want to shrink away from that day or not celebrate it but one of the things that I think that's been very helpful and very one of the most powerful things for me traditions is to celebrate her birthday in a meaningful way gathering at the cemetery we've done that every year mm -hmm. and we have a balloon release and we we make kind of a big deal of it Stacy makes all of her beautiful and delicious cakes so that's some enticement for people to come and eat some cake and then we have had people participate with a song and leave messages on the balloons and give a chance to uh, share our feelings about Lily with mm -hmm. our friends and those who have supported us here locally. And that's been a very, very powerful uh, thing for me to continue to heal and to celebrate her life through her birthdays. And um, it reminds me of a quote that was given to me within the first few months after she passed away and the quote basically says that the person who has passed on it's like a, a plea and says please talk about me as though i am not gone um, talk about me uh, speak to me invite me places treat me like i was there and, and it says that death is only a separation of our body but that all things our relationships our love everything continues and is still constant and so these celebrations, I think, sometimes help me realize how present those that have passed still want and want to be and can be in our lives. Yeah. And to be really honest with you, Christmas, I, it's been, it's my favorite time of year, but ever since Lily's passed, there's always this pain that comes with it more than any of the other holidays and maybe her birthday's coming too, but... Uh, so that pain kind of demotivates me to decorate and demotiv every every year um, I've faced that even three years um, out and it demotivates me to just or and just that uh, the spirit of Christmas and the excitement that I used to have it, it's been dulled and that's made me sad um, but as I do it, 
like this year the tree it, it kind of just was like oh the lights are on I wasn't really motivated to decorate it but as I did it that joy came back and um and then Shannon shared earlier this week in her stories about um, doing a Layla tree and that's something that I've wanted to do but just couldn't do it and maybe I avoided it because I felt so much pain thinking about it I just hadn't done it and looking at her she truly helped me to just go and do it and because it it just was so beautiful and it brought me joy to see it and hearing Shannon talk about how it brought her joy I was like okay I just gotta do it and I did it yesterday and we'll show you a little snippet of it um, and it really it was as once I did it I was like why didn't I do this before but um, I have a picture of Lily and um, and so Another tradition we did with our kids was to pick a ornament every year. And so it has, and then since Lily's passed away, I've picked out an angel ornament. So we have, we had two, our little 18 uh, month old grabbed one of them and it's broken, but it was a crystal uh, angel that had her um, birth color on it. And, and so, the second one I so it just has some of the ones that she picked when she was alive the ballet shoes she picked those and um, this one down here she picked that little snow girl and she loved um, music and so there's the music one down there and And so, and then I just added a few other things. One is a picture. Is this one here? I think it's okay if you put that. A picture that someone gave of Lily. It's one of my favorite pictures. But now that I've done it, uh, it brings me so much joy to see it every time I walk by it. And I am so grateful that to my sister Shannon for um, helping me and get to that point that to just do it and it is hard and it was painful but Why don't you share with them what your makes experience me so was, happy now what your experience was with the tree I think that's significant. oh okay so I went to Hobby Lobby yesterday and was looking for some like four foot trees one that wasn't a skinny tree saw this one and I was kind of like well I'll look around but then I was looking like there's no boxes, where do I get the tree? And I saw that there was um, one more tag left. And so I was like, well, I better grab this tag just in case, because <laughs> these things are going fast and it was really busy there. And so as I was looking around for like the pink bulbs and um, little snowflakes to add to the tree, I felt Lily so strong. She was there and she was so happy I was doing it. And she said, thank you, mom. And that was really special to me. And I'm thankful for that opportunity or that experience that I was able to, even though it hurt, to just do it and to feel her close and to now enjoy the joy that it, that seeing the tree and the memories brings me and Shannon also had the idea to uh, as as we decorated the tree with her ornaments to have everyone all their siblings um, put a tr put it on the tree and say something that they missed about her that they loved about her and that brought so much joy to me as some of the things I didn't remember or just hearing them say that they miss certain things really um, brought joy and so that's a tradition that we will for sure keep doing and um, one of the ornaments I have to show you this year a friend um, got this for me and she didn't know that I did an angel ornament but she did know that Lily loved um, ballet so 
that's our um, 2020 ornament for Lily, and I um, appreciate it so much. So one of the things that's not certainly unique to many of these things are not unique to us, but we every holiday that well, Stacy celebrates pretty much every holiday that there is. I love him. Um, even Dr. Seuss's birthday, I didn't know it was a holiday. <laughs> but we we will go and decorate Lily's grave for many of these holidays, and that's a way to uh, stay connected and keep her in her remembrance. And with right now, with our age of our boys, it's a time for them to just go and run around and be crazy mm -hmm. at the cemetery. Uh, today was a classic example of that as we went and decorated Lily's uh, grave today. With wreaths. So the the children, they they whether we realize it or not, this is becoming something that they remember uh, throughout the year and year after year, going to the cemetery and taking different things and decorating. And uh, we usually get a family picture of mm -hmm. some, um, something like that. But it's great from our perspective that Lily still continues to be part of the family for them. That it's not so much about her death all the time, but that we are still doing things for her like she's present. Uh, and being able to visit there and feel the, the closeness or feel special things. Today I could just kind of feel when we were there, uh, Grace was running around and Grace robbed one of the graves of a uh, a toy that a little baby had just passed away a few weeks ago, probably a couple months ago I guess, but recently and they had a toy there and uh, Grace was uh, robbing the grave and I could just picture Lily, her emotion and her <laughs> kind of frustration or her alarm with that and I could just just feel her personality there and as Grace was happily running around with her little newfound <laughs> toy. So um, some other ideas that um, I had these not all of them have have I done but this one was place a handwritten note um, in the stocking to your lost loved one. Um, and then read it on Christmas Day. Uh, on Christmas dinner, you could toast to your loved one and everyone shares a memory or something that they loved about them. Um, journal about favorite Christmas memories. So just, you could have a book that has every year you write a letter to your loved one about Christmas memories or just your feelings that Christmas. And I think that's a really awesome one easy one to do. Um, you could purchase a special candle and turn it on and that signifies your love, love presence in your heart. So this special candle, whenever we look at it, you could just, just remember your loved one. And um, last of all, you could do a service in honor of your loved one, which obviously that's what Survivors is all about, is doing service in honor of your loved one. But I just want to make a plug again for the Light the World campaign that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is doing. Every day they have a service suggestion that you could do to brighten someone's day. And as we've said a hundred times or more, this that's what truly has helped mend our hearts and have her legacy live on. So, uh, and if you do it, um, just post it in your, some of them you do post in social media, some you just do on your own, but you hashtag light the world. And tomorrow's I thought was a really fun idea is to decorate someone's door with holiday cheer and post it on social media. So um, I think that's a fun one the kids can be involved in and you can even um, put your loved one's name on the door in memory of or in honor of or remembering our loved one. So I just uh, want to say again that I know that the Christmas season can be so hard when we've lost someone and it can be so hard to make those traditions to uh, even though we want to and in our hearts we want to do it but it's so hard because the pain and the special time of the year but um, even something simple as um, a song, 
say, let's name this song, or if you know they had a, a special song or a favorite Christmas song, let's sing that on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day before we open presents. Just do that or think of something really small that you can do. And I know that that joy will enter into your heart and that you can um, continue on and you'll feel close uh, when you do these traditions and when you do good. I know that um, you'll feel close to your loved one as they um, are very near. And obviously tonight we're having this a little modified time instead of the normal 6 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. We're doing this in lieu of the Christmas devotional that will be broadcast worldwide at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I know that each year that we watch and participate in that, there will be a, a wonderful and peaceful spirit about that. So we invite all to join us and join the people worldwide in celebrating Christmas with this Christmas devotional at 6 o'clock. And the service activity that for this month about carrying mm -hmm. little kindness kits, I think that's such a splendid idea, something certainly we can do all year round, but at this time of year I think that the socks are very, very fitting. So we invite you to grab some socks, get some deodorant, some toothpaste,